So I've always been puzzled at the vampires and vampiric beings in JoJo because of how out of the ordinary they are to the story. While stands become a phenomenon later on that are even more puzzling, it doesn't take away too hard from what had happened. With the vampire-like beings in the franchise, a bunch of other odd things come out of the blue in later parts, and you can think of those things falling into that extremely mythical part about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Now, what was the reason for those things being in a story where it's reasonably normal without them? Araki goes about this in his author's note for the very first volume of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Put simply, the theme of this work is living. Through the two main characters, I want to examine two ways of living. It's all about singing the hymn of the battle between human and not human. This work was made for your enjoyment. I hope you like it. With that quote, you can understand to where we're going in Phantom Blood, but what if we adapted it differently? Instead of human and not human, let's try seeing it as humane and inhumane. Even when adapting that over, it still ties in very well because of the two characters representing each side, those two being Jonathan Joestar and Dio Brando. See, one of my favorite content creators, Now You See It, had this video on vampires and it's hard to explain it on easier terms, but for what it connects to in this video, it's that vampires are what they are, but aren't what they're supposed to be. A vampire's entire character isn't that they're just a vampire. While Dio is a vampire, being a vampire is not what had defined him. Vampirism itself was a medium to show the worst of humanity or the extremely taboo areas of it. For what attributes make up a lot of vampires we know in fiction, Dio holds a good portion of that even before coming a vampire. It's just that as soon as he did become one, it became largely better and noticeable for his character. He's cunning, strong, charismatic, and all of these other attributes, but for him to have these attributes shine to what degree they are now, he had to do something major. Originally, Dio had been this overwhelming force to Jonathan, but that power is what ended up making Jonathan a lot stronger. Realizing what he had done, he needed a jump to push him past Jonathan. Not in terms of strength, but in every way possible so that he's the victor of it all. It's obvious that what Dio did to make himself stronger was to make himself into a vampire. Dio knew about the strength of vampires because of what he had created with the two men that he came across on his drunken tirade. The thing is, two things are running parallel when this happens. There's what we see, but then there's the symbolism that I was talking about earlier running silently behind this all. Dio turning the man into a vampire had shown him the strength that he desires, but remove the vampires and what do we have? Dio's first kill of a human is what showed him this ridiculous strength to be attained. While seeing the vampire do his work was a visual interpretation for both us and Dio, it's Dio's actions that's what's defining the situation. The action of taking another person's life is such a largely inhumane thing. Once you take someone's humanity, you lose yours in the process, and that's where Dio's power had lain. This is such a huge defining moment that happens in Dio's life, and for what happens, it separates Jonathan and Dio between this large gap on good and evil. That's even before the biggest thing Dio does. Dio's next step to define himself and pull himself further from humanity to make himself stronger is taking another life. While he's been doing this passively through poisoning, the actual action of doing so is what branded Dio. Plus, poisoning is something that he's already done, so it wouldn't change him anyway. Taking the life of someone who had taken care of him like a son, the life of a father to someone who had originally believed that you two were brothers. It's unimaginable. And he does this all while laughing in this contemptuous and confident tone. His laugh isn't about that he's gaining the power he knows that they won't be able to touch him with it. He's laughing at everyone in the room for who they truly are. He laughs at humanity for not being able to take the steps to reach where he is. Removing the vampirism, it's the murder that makes him stronger. Being able to do this to someone that had loved him so much means that he's able to do this with ease at this point, which is what he does in that room. Inhumanity is what made him stronger, and none of the people there could be on that level with Dio. The fight follows up and Jonathan wins for the time being. At the end, he's sad for what he had done, but then finds Dio to still be alive. Dio goes on this journey of recovery and we see a lot of attributes become a lot more prominent. His power to manipulate others, his charisma being a strength to draw on people without the actual use of any power, his strength, and all of that was growing to take over the world if nothing was going to be done about it.
He had gained this following, and at this point, Dio was leading not just an army of vampiric zombies, but instead leading evil itself. Adapting this into Stardust Crusaders, where it's evident that he doesn't need zombies. He leads all of these stand users and even regular people because all of them swoon for Dio because of who he truly is. All of these stand users and even our main cast, all of them falling victim to Dio. Not to his powers, but him. While the flesh buds are ever so present in a lot of people, it's not what pulls people to him. Both Kakyoin and Avdal had spoken about Dio, and what they described about Dio is this enchanting energy that was pulling them towards him. A reassuring voice, filled with kindness. Avdal had gotten away from it because the temptation of it all is what terrorized him and snapped him right out of it. If he didn't run, he would have been controlled like everyone else that we know with his flesh blood. The evil that Dio originally had in Phantom Blood isn't as present in Stardust Crusaders and then on. The evil that Dio has now is a matured evil that makes more sense for what it does and what purpose it serves. Surprisingly, while he isn't that much of a vampire as he used to be, he's following the attributes of a vampire way better than the original Dio. Or well, it's more so that Dio had become this romanticized and more known version of a vampire than the traditional horror one. The evil that Dio has now is one that pinpoints on the dark areas that all humans face and it pulls it in ever so strongly. The temptation that all the humans have and keep at bay, Dio pulls them all in and wants all of those following him to make it as visible as possible. All of these stand users using their power without guidance and using it as reluctantly as possible. Dio wants you to be all that you can be and all that you will be for him. Calls to the dark side as we know it aren't as well as it's supposed to be. Usually it's done with a promise of power, but Dio does it all for whatever the person is looking for. Someone a leader who will direct them to the best route of income. Someone a leader who will tell them that it'll be alright and who will give them a path to their greatest desires. And some just want someone to follow because they have no guidance or anyone to cherish them. Dio gives them all of this and it doesn't even sound like clear cut evil. The thing is, the best type of evil isn't even that apparent. It's masked in greatness, and it's meant to be something that pulls people into it just so that they can get it all, no matter what the cost. At this point, you can't even see what about Dio's vampirism is pulling people in, because that's just Dio. It's always been him. The vampirism is just an easier outlet for people to follow the reasoning behind the evil. His manipulation being so strong and then we even had a physical manifestation for it in Jojo. When describing the flesh buds, it doesn't even sound like a real thing, but more of just an implanted mentality. Something that's inserted into the brains of living beings that controls them, and without being extremely precise, you won't be able to remove it. You'll just end up killing both you and the person in the process. This can easily just draw back into Phantom Blood, or pull forward into Stardust Crusaders. Jonathan had been trying to remove this mentality out of Dio's brain and hoping that it'll change him back to who he thought he was, but that wouldn't work because that's truly who Dio is. The Stardust Crusaders were able to do this to Kakyoin and Polon Earth because what the buds made them into wasn't really them. It was their worst attributes made most dominant and it was all like that while following Dio. I'm going to be going off the script for a little bit because I had this little epiphany while recording. The reason why the flesh buds didn't work on Avdal is because he has no form of temptation for Dio to prey on. It worked on Kakyoin and Polonerf because Polonerf has his revenge and Kakyoin wanted acceptance. It didn't work at all on Avdal because Dio had nothing to pounce on Avdal for. And that's actually... Pretty interesting. Now notice you can't do what you did to Kakyoin and Polonera to the enemy stand users we encounter. They're all like the Dio we know in Phantom Blood. You can't remove this about their character because this is truly how they are, or how they believe that they are. Then the final victims of it all, being the regular people being guided by flesh buds. Our biggest example being Okiyasu and Keicho's dad. Now when I was piecing this up, I got blown away on levels of Divine Sandstorm. Father Nijimura being the man who he was while getting the help from Dio was doing the best. All because he was following Dio. But then, once Dio had died, everything had gone downhill. Father Nijimura became what we know now, but it's what he became when you move the vampirism aside. Without Dio, he lost his guidance, lost his money, and worst of all, he lost himself. 
I mean, well, he already lost himself as soon as he saw her fall and deal, but you know what I mean. He had followed evil for what it gave him temporarily, but in the end of it all, he lost everything. Every day, continuously trying to put that picture of him and his family together, reminiscing of a time to where he was better because he wasn't following the evil that made him into what he was. I think that's why Araki kept his look through D.I.U. instead of giving a way to fix him. He visually turned into the evil that he was representing. It originally looked promising, but in reality, it was as ugly as he was. Father Nijimura's appearance was his history of actions made visual. The abuse, the following of Dio, all of that. And he has to hold on to that for as long as he lives. That probably goes with all of those that had flesh buds. The good thing about Father Nijimura is that he was redeemed by his kids, and they had accepted him for who he is. While Okiyasu accepts him, what Father Nijimura has done will never be forgotten. And while what he did was bad, and it was all terrible against his kids, it was originally done for the good of the family. He wanted money so that, hopefully, his family could live better for it. And with that situation, Dio's attack of temptation was very easy. He takes advantage of all of these misguided people who just want all that life has to offer and either promises them that or gives it to them immediately. Either way, they're going to be bound to any of Dio's wishes from now on. This is an evil that so many people follow in this world today. It's used in all types of things, but it all directs back into temptation. It's so crazy that even if you do or don't remove the vampire from Dio, he's just an extremely great con man or cult leader. Thinking about it right now, off script, this is, everything Dio does, it, it kind of fits a cult leader. That's a, except he actually gives everybody what they want, but still, big thing. Yes, back to script. The attributes stay even if he does or doesn't suck blood. Vampires in fiction have always been this outlet for the darkest sides of humanity. And in Dio's case, it's temptation, which is the catalyst to it all. Temptations of wealth, power, happiness, anything. All that's needed is your devotion. Oh, wait, so that's why his name is God, because God promises all of that to you too, I get it. You do know that the devil does the same thing, right? And that makes more sense with connecting that to Dio because you don't really know what you're in for with Dio if you're one of the people that he's preying on. At that point, you wouldn't know if it's the god or devil talking to you. That's why it looks so good. Oh. Well, see, see now that you say it that way, you make me feel kind of better. Thank you all for watching. I was hoping to fit what I had written for the Pillar Men into here, but on paper it looked pretty long, so I didn't want to push the lengths of this video in specific. I'll be sure to go over it when I can. If you enjoy the video, leaving a like shows me that and gives me more initiative to make more videos like this. Comment any thoughts that you had. If you like videos like this, just stay for the end cards, I'll have them on there. And subscribing keeps you updated. You can keep up with me through my media in the description. Be honest with you, it's mostly Twitter and Instagram. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next one. So until then, Van Helsing. That's the one that killed the vampires, right? I think so. Until then, peace out and Godspeed.